and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing another episode in my color comparison series. Now we have already done uh, ultramarine blue and sap green so if you're interested I'll link those up and it's on a playlist on my channel so you can check that out if you're interested. Also if you're wondering why I have this uh, swatch card here um, of my Winsor Newton um, metal watercolor box it's just because it helps to white balance my camera um, so that you can see the truest colors possible. So today we're going to be spotlighting on burnt siennas. I have four burnt siennas for you. The Daniel Smith, M. Graham, Winsor & Newton, and I also have M. Graham's uh, Transparent Red Iron Oxide, which, uh, you know, they use these names kind of interchangeably. Like Winsor & Newton's is PR 101, so it's the exact same pigment and it is comparable. A lot of burnt siennas are a mixture of both the PR101 or the PBR7. PBR7 is the true burnt sienna, but it can be a little bit opaque sometimes, so a lot of brands prefer to use PR101, and they'll call it burnt sienna, or they'll do a mixture. So I did want to include that, especially because I do use that as my burnt sienna a lot of the time. So as always, like last time, I did put uh, a strip of waterproof black ink down just so that we can see the difference in transparency between the different pigments. And I have them all uh, swatched out off to the side here. I have the, the different paints and there are quite a few differences between the different ones. So up first is going to be the Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna. Now this is just the regular one. I know they also have an Italian Burnt Sienna, a Burnt Sienna Light. They have several variations on their Burnt Sienna, um, but I just have their regular one here. Um, and I have been thinking about trying their Italian Burnt Sienna because I hear great things. I think it's more orange. Um, and as you can see, it's granulating a little bit and it's semi-transparent on that line. Nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. It is one of my favorite burnt siennas because it is more red and so fiery and beautiful. It's unique. It's definitely the most red and it's unique in my collection. Next up, we have the M. Graham Burnt Sienna, also using pigment brown 7, PBR 7. You can see that this one is a little bit more orangey brown, a little bit more of a traditional Burnt Sienna. Come in and add a little more water toward the bottom. Now this one's also starting to granulate on me, but I'm anticipating that it won't granulate quite as much as the Daniel Smith. That's just a feeling that I have. The next one that I have to show for you guys is the Winsor & Newton Burnt Sienna. And they're not using Burnt Sienna pigment at all, but rather the PR 101, which is rust. It's transparent red iron oxide. Oh, look at that. The paint, for whatever reason, it seems like the um, Micron Pen ink is repelling that paint away. Hmm. That's interesting. Now I really had to dig in there to that watercolor pan to get this color um, as saturated as it is. Um, but that's the darkest, most saturated that I can get theirs to be. And the last one I have is the M. Graham. PR 101, which is the same pigment that Winsor & Newton's using, only it is far more pigmented. Nice and strong and saturated. Just gonna bring that down with a little water. 
Now I don't anticipate that the PR 101 is going to uh, granulate very much because it's more of a, it's, it's not as granular certainly as the true burnt sienna. All right, so I've dried all of these up and now I'm gonna do a glaze over the right side of each of the swatches. So I'm gonna grab some of that burnt sienna from Daniel Smith. I really like the Daniel Smith's Burnt Sienna. I feel like it's unique to any of the others in that it's not just the most red, but there's a lovely kind of rosiness to it. It's like a lovely pinky red. Um, it's cooler somehow than the M. Graham's PR 101 or any of these others which are more orange, like Earth orangey fiery orangey red this is more pinkish um and i love that i find that very lovely and it does granulate the most out of all of the others that i have here here's the m graham burnt sienna pbr7 glaze is lovely and nice and transparent that dried very transparent more transparent than the Daniel Smith which I'd call semi transparent here's the Windsor and Newton now I'm not gonna lie I'm disappointed with the Windsor and Newton's burnt sienna and also when I go to do a glaze on that one I can also tell that the color underneath is starting to lift up a little bit and that's because probably because I had to build it up so much just to get that original swatch. Um, like I said in my review for the Windsor & Newton, um, I know, I know, I know that this Burnt Sienna has a cult following so don't, don't come after me, don't attack. Um, but if you like this, I definitely get the tube versus the pan burnt sienna because I've really been digging just to get these swatches, really digging, digging in that pan and it's starting to hurt my brush. Um, despite the fact that I did soak it a little bit, I just find that the pan is hard to release that color. So you may choose to buy it in the tube and use it fresh. You might like that, that it's softer. Um, Nothing wrong with that. I just feel like for my money, for me personally, I won't be repurchasing that. I think there are better options here. It's my least favorite, absolutely, of all the ones um, I mentioned. And like I tried to say in my original review of the Windsor & Newton watercolors, some people were a little bit confused when I said that I felt like some of the watercolors, some of them, are a little hit and miss, and some of them do contain more filler although they mix very cleanly. And some people are a little confused what I meant by that. How is that possible? That, you know, and, and they didn't believe that it was possible. Let me elaborate. What I mean is the color of the pigment, the hue of the pigment itself is good quality and it's visually eye clean. The pigment is visually eye clean, resulting in clean mixes, but just like a student grade paint, their Cotman range, for example, they mix cleanly, but they absolutely do have fillers, extenders, and bulking agents because they just can't afford to give you more pigment for the price point that they're offering them at. And I feel that very same way about some of the Windsor & Newton professional watercolors, this Burnt Sienna included, because I can just feel with my brush they're a little gelatinous. I could just feel a little more starch or pigment uh, filler in there. Um, and the proof really is in the pudding on that one. I'm sorry, I have to be very honest with you guys. If you want something comparable in hue, but much more saturated, I'd go with the M. Bram PR 101 or try uh, a quinacridone rust or quinacridone orange, burnt orange pigment from Daniel Smith. Um, because you'll get a very similar hue but much more saturation. And then lastly, I'm gonna glaze that M. Graham PR 101. Very transparent. Very transparent, glazes beautifully. I'm just gonna show you watered down, very watered down. You can get that very same hue but you can also take it much stronger. And that's very important when you're trying to mix a Payne's Gray, 
or well it's Jane's Grey when you mix it with the ultramarine blue which we'll do in a moment or if you're trying to mix your own chromatic black this one's not going to take you there it's just not saturated enough all right so I dried these up and um, I was getting more paint out of my Winsor Newton burnt sienna half pan to get enough paint to do the following mixtures and I mean it was just so hard and it really like no matter how long I tried soaking it I really went in there I was scrubbing on the pan I really couldn't get any pigment to release so I went digging in my collection and I pulled out my um, five milliliter tube of their burnt sienna and I mixed that off to the side off camera and I have to say that um, I think that the tube does much better than the half pan. I don't know if maybe I got a defective one. Um, let me know in the comment section down below what your experience with their half pan burnt sienna has been if you have it. I know a lot of you tell me that you love the Winsor Newton burnt sienna. I know that it has a cult following and I want to love it too. So I went ahead and I tried the tube, like I said, and I definitely think that there's more pigment in the tube version, although it's still kind of a weaker color, um, but it really released so much better. So if you like their burnt sienna, I would definitely recommend that you get their uh, tube version of this color. It's going to save you a lot of uh, stress in the long run. So I'm going to swatch out the tube version of this color right next to it. Um, just so that you can see that it can get more saturated than the pan, the half pan, even though I really soaked that for like 10 minutes before I started working with it. So, you know, that I'm not mad at. I'm not as angry or disappointed with that color as I was with the half pan. So. I'd use it in the tube and I'd use it fresh from the tube would be my suggestion. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of paint mixes that I like to use. The first one and probably the most common is going to be Burnt Sienna Ultramarine Blue to mix a Jane's Gray or a Chromatic Black. So I'm gonna put down the Ultramarine Blue first. And I'm going to go into the Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna. And we're going to mix that together. Now you can see if you mix more toward the brown, it will be more of like a burnt umber or a sepia. And if you mix more toward the blue, you could start to get dark into that black kind of space. So there's really no need to buy tube black or tube gray paints because you can easily mix your own and save a lot of money that way. And it'll be more harmonious with the rest of the painting. However, if you like using tube black or tube gray, that is really a very personal choice. But I love the Daniel Smith's version of this because just look how lovely that is. I hope that'll show up on camera how there's almost this dark blackened plum kind of undertone to the mix that's only possible with the Daniel Smith burnt sienna because it's got that cool pinky kind of rosy undertone to it that the others don't have. It's really very lovely and here I'm going to water the mixture down so you can see what kind of a gray you can get. Isn't that beautiful? I think so at least. Now you can also take more obviously of that burnt sienna and get something very like into a burnt umber as you can see there. So that's why I don't keep burnt umber burnt or raw umber on my palette anymore because I feel like I'm always using burnt sienna. I can just add a little ultramarine blue and get that hue that way. All right, next up, I'm gonna do the same thing with the M. Graham. It mixes very much how I would expect it to. I can see that their burnt sienna is stronger. So right now, what I have is more of a burnt umber kind of color. If you can see that, I need to add more of the blue to take it to more of that gray place there. So, there we are. Let 
Beautiful. Beautiful. And that really is more of a true neutralized gray. This one over here has that like, like I said, there's like a violet, kind of like black and violet. It's so chromatic and beautiful. I wish you could see it in person, but this is so unique. To me at least, the mixtures I'm able to get with their Burnt Sienna, and for that reason, I will always repurchase Daniel Smith's Burnt Sienna. I like to have both options. All right, next up, I'm going to do the Winsor & Newton. I can get rid of this um, now, I think, most likely, because I'm sure the white balance will be fine. So you can see, once again, if you mix it more toward the brown, you can get that kind of burnt umber. So you really don't have to buy burnt umber, raw umbers for that reason. But if you mix it more toward the blue, you can get more of that gray. But I don't think it will ever go black, really. Um, as it's just not enough pigment there. And we can wet that out a little bit more. Well, that's actually pretty good, to be fair. That is pretty good. This one mixes a warmer black or warmer gray because it's more toward the orange than any of the others, which is lovely. I actually really like that. And lastly, I have here to show you the M. Graham's Transparent Red Iron Oxide, which to me is my favorite when I'm trying to mix a nice chromatic mixed black because it's the most transparent of the options. It's going to get a much more clear black as where their, their um, burnt sienna, it is lovely, but if you try mixing a black with it, you'll get the color, but it's gonna be a little more chalky, a little bit more opaque. Um, not that that color is chalkier to opaque, but look how dark that is. That is black. That is absolutely black. See that? And this, most of the time, if you see something that looks like black in my artwork, this is what it is. And wet it out and you can see the grays. Isn't that beautiful? All right, next up, I'm going to be mixing the Burnt Sienna with one of my favorite Winsor & Newton colors, which is their Ultramarine Violet. And this is one of my favorite mixtures with Burnt Sienna. I mean, the, the mixtures are endless, but I'm just gonna be showing you my top favorites in this video. A lot of brands make an ultramarine violet, including M. Graham, and, and they have two actually, M. Graham. And I like theirs, but my absolute favorite is the Winsor Newton. So as you can see, what starts to happen when we mix the Burnt Sienna with ultramarine violet is you get this absolutely gorgeous kind of warm, plummy, purpley brown color. This is one of my favorite, 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 favorite mixtures. And it granulates out so beautifully because the Winsor & Newton's Ultramarine Violet really granulates quite heavy. And the Burnt Sienna granulates very heavy also. This is an amazing color. It's a gorgeous, warm, plummy brown. It can be used in so many applications. I find it useful for landscape, wildlife, um, even some still lives. It's just beautiful. I love that mixture. And the next one is the M. Graham. Beautiful. The, um, M. Graham is a little bit cooler, the resulting mixture. It's not quite as warm and toward the red, obviously, as that Daniel Smith, but I gotta, I gotta say, for a true burnt sienna, 
Daniel Smith's my favorite right now. And there's that color watered out some. Next we're going to do the Windsor and Newton. Now if you have any trouble with your ultramarine violet from Windsor and Newton's, it will um, dry into a really hard rock. I just add a tiny drop of honey into the pan and it re-wets beautifully. I'm anticipating this mixture might not be as pretty as the others only because this burnt sienna is warmer more toward the yellowy orange and so it will likely neutralize out quite a bit and a little more of that in there that's still pretty nice I'm using the tube version of the burnt sienna um, from them from this point on in the video and as you can see I'm just having a better time of it and the last one is the M. Graham oh that's very pretty too I think it needs a little more violet there we go now these ones, these last two mixtures here that we did, because it's not a true burnt sienna, it's that transparent rust, they definitely are more neutralized out, more, more mud. <laughs> but um, my favorite is that Daniel Smith for this mixture. All right, the next mixture that I'm gonna be showing you with the burnt sienna is going to be using sap green. This is the M. Graham sap green that I have here. And I'll remind you, I recently did a comparison video with Sap Green, so I'll link that up if you're interested. But here is the Sap Green. And there's the Burnt Sienna. This usually mixes a really lovely greenish umber kind of color, like a raw umber but more green. This is very useful in landscapes. The M. Graham. almost like a dark kind of olive color. Really pretty. For this application, just on wet, I can, I can, they kind of look very similar. And Windsor Newton. is very pretty. Very, very, very pretty. As these are drying, some really fun things are starting to happen with those. They looked more dull um, when they were wet, but as they're drying, they're really starting to be pretty. So I can't wait to see the whole thing dry. And last but certainly not least, the M. Graham transparent red iron oxide. Ooh, that one is my favorite. That one is just lovely. Exactly how I wanted it to look. Like this gorgeous, deep, browned olive, this gorgeous green earth. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so I've allowed all of that to dry and the paper in my watercolor sketchbook is a little bit warped here. Um, but 
We got some very interesting results and this might have been my favorite episode of color comparison yet. Um, like I said, very interesting results here and I'm really glad that we did this. So for the first one, the Daniel Smith, this color is so unique of a burnt sienna in my opinion. I've tried a lot of burnt siennas from different brands. I've also tried the Schmincke um, and the Sennelier and I mean not, never have I found one that mixed so uniquely and so brilliantly. Um, the same PBR 7 pigment that the M. Graham is using um, but it mixes so unique. There's something special about this color and after I'm done filming I am off to purchase another full-size tube of this because I'm running low on it. I've got to have that in my collection. So comparatively the burnt sienna is across the board. Which one do I think is the best? Well <laughs> that is really personal personal preference and personal choice. If you could only have one of these and especially if you were a beginner I'd go with the M. Graham burnt sienna because it's the most typical standard burnt sienna. It's going to mix like a burnt sienna should. Um, it's not going to throw you any wild cards or anything but um, the gray and black mixtures you can get from it they're just a little dull. Um, not that the color's dull, but the mixture can be a little dull in darker mixes. So for my chromatic blacks and grays, I prefer their PR 101 uh, quinacridone, um, sorry, transparent red iron oxide. The Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna and the M. Graham Transparent Red Iron Oxide are my favorite of these two and I'm definitely going to be keeping these two on my main watercolor palette from now on. So they ball glazed pretty well. Um, this one you can just see that there's something special about that dark mixture. It granulates the most out of all of them as well and there's just a blue violet kind of thing going on with the resulting gray and black mixtures and somewhat of a warm plummy brown thing going on with the browns. It's really lovely. Here where I mixed in the ultramarine violet from Windsor & Newton I was able to get this gorgeous plum brown uh, that I love to mix and I, I like it in the other brands too but it's the most vibrant in the Daniel Smith. It's my favorite favorite paint mixture recipe right now. And then when I mixed it here with the sap green I can see the individual red speckles of that burnt sienna contrasting with the green and that doesn't happen with the others. Same thing with this mixture. I can see it looks more orangey. These individual red orangey speckles granulating with the more violet mixture. So you may like when that happens. I like when that happens, but you might not like when that happens. So I just wanted to let you know. But for that reason, it makes it the most unique of all the ones on here. And the one I'm the most in love with and the most excited about. I have a passion for their burnt sienna. The M. Graham is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. M. Graham tends to be my favorite watercolor brand in general. Um, so I'm not throwing any shade at M. Graham, but it's it's a very typical standard burnt sienna. It's going to mix the way a burnt sienna should. Nothing um, super spectacular about it, like this one. It, it's But it is a nice, strong, good color. Uh, it's okay. Um, mix the way it should. The Windsor & Newton, um, I feel very strongly that if you like this color, you should get it in the tube and use it fresh because the half pan really was kind of a headache to use. And I found that it didn't glaze well onto itself because it just feels like there's more filler in it and the color underneath starts to lift up. Um, this color, not all the Windsor & Newton watercolors, but this one, absolutely. Um, and the resulting gray mixture was just a little bit um, lighter because I couldn't get it to that very dark saturated place. Here where I mixed in the violet, I got some really lovely granulation um, and a nice effect, but the color's a little more dead, which I would expect it to be because this is more yellowy orange versus some of the others. Um, and the green earthy kind of green umber color I mixed came out okay too. It flowed wet into wet the most. I think it moved the most out of all of these wet into wet so that was a nice. And then the M. Graham 
which is the most comparable to the Winsor & Newton's Burnt Sienna, this is their Transparent Red Iron Oxide, is my favorite for a transparent red iron oxide. I feel like it's the most saturated, the most fiery, the most strong. And just look at that resulting mixture I was able to get. How dark. I could get it black. That's black. Or I could get a burnt umber tone. I could get that Jane's Gray or Payne's Gray tone. And it mixed nice with the violet as well. But look how beautiful it mixed with the sap green. I was able to get that really nice dark earth umber violet, um, earth umber kind of um, olive green color. And it moved really nice wet into wet also.